Hey random citizens, today we're doing more SAT math because apparently the birth rate dipped in 2008 and that actually has absolutely nothing to do with Desmos but here we are. I'm gonna show you how to solve the table, quadratic function, linear function and angle questions which 99% of students struggle on. So let's move on. So here we're given the problem with the table so therefore we can assume that we'll have to use a table regression. But let's look at it first. The table gives the coordinates of two points on a line in the xy plane. The y-intercept of the line is k minus 5 and b. Where k and b are constants, what is the value of b? So, first of all, let's focus on the y-intercept. We know that when it's a linear equation, our y-intercept will have the x value of 0. So therefore, it can be assumed that k minus 5 is 0, so k is going to be 5. The next step, what we're going to do is make a table regression. So we just type table in Desmos, and it gives us a table. And let's substitute 5 instead of values of k. So we make it like this, then we write it like this, minus 15. So then we have to press at this button and the regression comes out. So here we have our equation and we see what is the value of b. So to understand how a linear function looks like, we should look at this. It is the overall structure of linear function where a is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So we know that Whenever we have y-intercept of linear function, it will be its b. So here, I can see that my b is 33, and on the graph as well, I can see that my y-intercept equals 33. So, the value of b is 33. Let's move on to the next question. Here is a problem. We're given a table of values for gx, where gx equals to fx divided by x plus 3, and fx is a linear function. We need to find the y-intercept of the graph of y equals fx. So first of all, let's use the table regression for it. I just write a function table in decimals and rewrite all of the values. So it can be seen that in our question, we have gx instead of y1, but I'm going to use the regression, so I'll keep it as y1 and substitute it instead of gx. And also, we have x in our question instead of x1, so I'm going to use x1 here for regression. Okay, let's use the tilde sign for regression and rewrite it as it is in our question. So, we're also given that fx is a linear function. As I've explained in the previous question, we know that linear function's overall structure looks like this. So, let's rewrite the whole function. Because we're asked to find the y-intercept of this graph. And we just need to find this b, so after we'll use our regression, our b value will appear and we'll just have the answer. So let's rewrite it. But it's really important to use x1 here, not just x, because if I would use x, it will give me an error. So I use x1 and I see here that my b is equal to 36, which is the y-intercept of the graph of y equals fx. So the answer is 36. Let's move on to the next question. So the next question is the one of the most common ones on the SATs. A quadratic function models the height and feet of an object above the ground in terms of time and seconds after the object is launched. The model indicates the object launched from the ground 0 feet and reaches its maximum height of 576 feet above the ground 12 seconds after being launched. Based on the model, what is the height and feet of the object above the ground 16 seconds after being launched? So, here we're going to use the table regression. 
And we have to understand what is x and what is y in our problem. So almost every time in this types of problem, you can say that your x will be your seconds. So here, your x is 0 and your height is 0 because it has been launched from the ground 0 feet at 0 seconds. So we also know that its maximum height was at 12 seconds and the maximum height was 576. So because it is maximum, we can use the other form of the quadratic equation here. We can use the vertex form. So it looks like this, a multiplied by x1 minus the x coordinate of the vertex squared and plus y coordinate of the vertex. So here we can see that our a is minus 4 and moreover we can see that this is our vertex, this is our maximum point, so the maximum height the object reaches. So right now we just can rewrite this equation with minus 4 instead of a, with the regular x, and just substitute our 16 instead of x, and we'll get the answer 512, which is d. Alright. Let's tackle this SAT geometry problem that at first looks way scarier than it actually is. A lot of students get stuck here, but with Desmos, it becomes super clear. So, we have three points in the coordinate plane. Point A, 1, 0. I'm going to label it as A. Point B, 0, 0. I'm going to label it as B and minus 1, comma 0, point C. And we we're asked what's a possible measure of angle ABC in radians. So we see that ABC is basically a straight line, so its angle will be 180. We don't have 180 in our answer choices, so what are we going to do? So the first thing is, we have our angles in radians. And we know that pi in radians actually equals 180 degrees. So let's simply substitute 180 instead of pi in our answer choices. And then transfer the calculator to degrees. Okay, but we still haven't got our 180. So what, what are we going to do? So it's a kind of tricky moment that most students are failing on, but it's actually really easy. We know that in the angles we can plus and minus 360 degrees and our angle will remain the same. So let's make a slider and simply drag it until it comes closer to 180. Okay, I'm going to increase the maximum value of slider to 100. Okay, it's somewhere here, yeah. So it's 36, it is 360. Okay, so 28 is 0, and 39, no, it's not the variant. So let's try this variant. It will be 38, it is 90, 29. So it is also not the variant. 462, let's drag it a bit. Also, it is really important so that your A should always be the whole number without decimals. Okay, so here we see that our A equals 38 and we have 180, which is our answer. The answer is C. But I'll, I'm going to show you the answer D and prove that it's wrong. So, okay, we we'll just make it as usual. And we see here that 38 is 360, 39 is 0, and 40 is minus 360. So basically what we're going to do, we just build a slider and look on the nearest numbers to the 0 and 180 and try to find 
which one will give us the 180 in the answer. So that's it. So here's the last question that I'm going to show you how to solve today. And it says the function g is defined by gx equals x in the module over a minus 14 where a is less than 0. What is the product of j out of 15a and j out of 7a? So, in order to solve this problem, we're going to use the slider. Let's rewrite everything that we're given. Module x over a at the slider minus 14. We know that our a is less than 0, so our right boundary is going to be 0. And here, we're just going to rewrite everything. The product of j is a. And we'll see that our value will not change while our a is changing in the range less than 0. I can make a thousand and it still won't change. So our answer is 609. Thanks for watching.